To get started, go to admin.google.com. This is the Google Admin Console, and I'm going to assume you've seen this before, and you've probably created a handful of users and maybe a group or two as well. So let's dive into some essential settings across the Admin Console. And the last one I cover is going to be the most important for your security. First, let's click on the arrow next to the app section on the left-hand side, then choose the arrow next to Google Workspace and go down to Drive and Docs. The first thing we're going to look at is Sharing Settings, which is the top section of this page. In Sharing Settings, the first setting you're going to see is for sharing outside of your domain. And you need to make a decision about whether you want users to be able to share documents more broadly with people outside the domain, or if they can only share internally or with a low listed domain, so other trusted domains that you know. Now, there are a few different levels here. If you have this turned on like I do, you could then decide that they can share externally with other accounts, but they can't make a file available to anyone with just a link. There are some other security settings here that you might want to check. For example, the access checker will provide a pop-up warning to a user before they share with someone outside of the domain, just to nudge them to think about whether that is safe or not. And remember, anytime you've made a change here, you always need to make sure you click the Save button under each panel. Back on the Drive and Docs page, if we scroll down slightly, you'll see there's also a section for shared drive creation. Shared drives are great for having teams share documents with one another without having to worry about who owns the file because files inside shared drives are owned by the organization as a whole. If you check the box at the top of the page here, that will stop people being able to create shared drives. But I really recommend allowing people to do this or at least creating some centrally that you can share to different teams. One of the painful things about managing Google Workspace can be that you have to manually add people to groups or organizational units when they start. But with a tool like Gpanel, you can actually automate all of that. You can set out a whole process that happens in the run up to someone being onboarded or offboarded so that they get added to groups or shared drives or removed from them or even their access removed from the files, their password change and the account suspended automatically. And once you've set it up once, it will just automatically run for users that need to enter that flow. Or let's say you wanted to set up Gmail signatures for every user in the organization to make sure it's uniform for everybody. There's not actually a way to do that in the admin console, but with Gpanel, you've got the option to set a default signature which can include variables like the person's name or organizational unit or role. It's worth checking out and you can get your first month free if you click the special link in the description. Now let's move from Drive and Docs over to Gmail. I find Gmail super powerful, but one thing you're gonna to want to do is make sure your users have access to the most helpful features. So in user settings here, you might want to make sure that people can access Gmail offline. If you've got a lot of people in the company traveling, this is gonna be super helpful for them. Otherwise, they're only gonna be able to see their email when they're connected to the internet. There are some other really helpful features here that I don't think Think there's a good reason to turn off like the ability to enable confidential mode so people can send self-destructing emails smart compose that will suggest sentences as they're being written dynamic emails which is a new email format that allows people to do things like reply to comments on google docs right inside an email mail merge which does what it says on the tin allows people to create an email that can be merged with tags like first name last name and other information perfect for emailing customers or even internally across the company but making it feel more personal now if we collapse that user settings option and scroll down now we're going to choose spam phishing and malware email is one of the most common attack vectors for bad actors so you you want to be protected against spam, malware, and phishing across your domain. Gmail does do a good job of that by default, but there's a few extra things that you can turn on here. I'm going to click here where it says enhanced malware and phishing protection and check that box and save that. And you've also got the option to turn on security sandbox. Now, if users in your domain get a lot of attachments, this is just an extra line of defense. It does mean that emails might be delivered slightly slower, but it means that Google will open every attachment in a virtual environment before it gets delivered to check for malware, ransomware, and zero day threats. I can just tick this box to turn it on, click save, and it's an extra layer of protection without you really needing to do anything. And if you just want to choose a subset of people that this is enabled for, you can do that by using security sandbox rules and the link is in that section. Back on the main Gmail settings page, we're gonna scroll down and go to end user access here. For some reason, there's this option buried here that probably better lives in spam, but it says warn for external recipients. This should be on by default, but if it isn't, I really highly recommend turning it on. And what it does is pops up a warning to end users when they're about to send an email to someone on an external domain. By far the biggest threat to your security across your domain is end users clicking links or sending information to the wrong place. So this is just a good visual reminder before people send external emails, particularly if they're sending to addresses 
that might look similar to someone in the organization. Aside from security, you also want to make sure that people have a good experience using the tools within your business. So we're gonna go over to calendar now on the left-hand side. And again, go to sharing settings here, just like we did for Drive. And we can set some defaults to help people both internally and externally. The first is the external sharing option. You probably don't want people able to share their whole calendar and all of the details with people externally but it can be really helpful for people to see whether someone is free or busy or not. So I recommend saying only free or busy here, and it means that the calendar could be shared with someone externally, they'd be able to view it, but they would literally just see busy blocks where events exist in the calendar. You can decide whether Google Meet is the default video conferencing option. It should be, there really is no need to be paying for another tool when you're already paying for workspace. And again, you can make sure that people get warned if they're inviting people that are outside of the domain before they send a calendar invite. One thing that I don't think is used enough in Google Workspace domains is the resources. Resources allows you to set up buildings and other resources like meeting rooms, or it could even be bookable devices right inside Google Calendar. So you see, I have a building called London Office on the left, and within the London Office, I have a meeting room. I can do things like set the building and the floor that it's on, the capacity of people, and so on. That means when a user creates an event in Google Calendar, like this they can choose add rooms or location and then look for the meeting room that they need and now everyone that gets invited to that calendar will know this is an in-person meeting in meeting room 10. AI is obviously coming up in conversation every day you probably want to make sure that your employees have access to tools like Gemini across Google Workspace so we're going to go to the generative AI section on the left here and choose Gemini app first. In here, under user access, you can make sure that everyone has access to the Gemini app. And one thing I really recommend looking at turning on is the ability to access apps with Gemini. For example, the ability to use YouTube to quickly summarize videos or connect with Google Maps or with Docs and Gmail and so on so that Gemini can provide information about documents that exist within Drive or emails in Gmail. A recently released feature allows people to create gems, which are like custom AI agents in Gemini, and then share them within the organization. I think you definitely want to turn that on. It means that one person could create a customer response gem, for example, and then share it with everyone else inside the business. Now let's go and click on Gemini for Workspace on the left over here. And this is going to allow you to enable the side panel inside the different Google apps. So people can access Gemini right inside Google Docs and Sheets and Slides to help them with the work they're doing where they're doing it. Again, really recommend turning this on. It's a super helpful tool. Finally, probably the most important thing that you want to enable in the admin console is two-step verification. So on the left-hand side, we're going to click on show more, click the arrow next to security, then authentication, and then two-step verification. At the very least, two-step verification should be enabled for any admins on your domain. But ideally, I would enable it for every user. It's one of the best protections you can have against bad actors hijacking accounts through phishing attempts. You can allow users to turn on two-step verification, but then you can enforce two-step verification if you're just starting. You can set a date in the future, and that means as users log in, they will begin to get a prompt that they must set this up by that date, or they'll be locked out of their account and it means then you know that you'll be compliant by that date. You can also choose what verification type they're allowed. So the second step could be a mobile phone number, it could be a, a physical security key or an authentication app. Again, dependent on your own policies, that's going to decide what you're happy with here. If you've got any questions about settings in the Google Admin Console, drop them in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one.